This is Australia. In 1770, Captain Cook, Captain Cook sailed up along the eastern coast of Australia. North, east, south, west, around, around Australia is water, water, ocean. This is land, where the water, where the ocean and the land meet is the coast. This, this is the eastern coast of Australia. And in 1770, Captain Cook, on his ship, the Endeavour, his ship was called, called the Endeavour, sailed up along, along the eastern coast, along the top half, the top half of the eastern coast, along the top half of the coast is the Great Barrier Reef, the Great Barrier Reef. What's that? This is coral, coral under the water. Here is the surface, the surface, the top of the ocean of the water and under the water where there's coral is a reef and along the top, top half Half of the eastern coast is the Great Barrier Reef. On the 11th of June, 1770, the Endeavour grounded in the Great Barrier Reef. It grounded. It hit, hit ground. Here is the surface, the top of the water. Here is the sea floor the bottom, the ground. The endeavor didn't hit, hit the ground. It hit, hit coral because they were in the Great Barrier Reef. They grounded, grounded on coral on the 11th of June, 1770. Here is the endeavor in the water, floating in the water. And here's the piece of coral, the part of the reef that it's hit. This happened at 11 p.m. at night, at night. Captain Cook, Captain Cook was sleeping. He was sleeping and he was woken up by the sound of the ship hitting the coral. He's the captain. This is the crew. The captain is in charge. So it was at night. This is the moon. The sun wasn't out. The sun wasn't in the sky. There was the moon. The moon also shines, shines a bit of light, of light like the sun, but only a little bit. This is a tree. From trees come wood. Wood, you can cut, cut wood into planks. Here is a plank of wood. Back then, all ships, all, all ships, 100% of ships, all of them, were made from wood. In the moonlight, in the light from the moon, the crew, the crew of the ship could see planks of wood, planks of wood floating, floating in the water. 
They couldn't see the damage, the damage. They couldn't see the hole, the hole in the ship, but they could see the planks of wood that had broken, broken off and were now floating in the water. And the ship, the Endeavour, began to fill up, to fill up with water because there was a hole, a hole in the ship. Here are some trees, two trees. Here is land, land. Here is the water, the ocean, the level, the level, the level of the water changes. It can get higher, it can get higher, or it can get lower. The water level, the water level changes. This is high tide when the water level is high. This is low tide where the water level is low. Here, the water level is higher than it is here. Here, it's lower. When the endeavor struck, hit the coral at 11 p.m., the tide, the water level was high, was high, but it was beginning to lower. It was beginning to get lower, to go down. This is dangerous, dangerous, because the water, the water is keeping the ship afloat. The ship, the ship is floating on the water. A part, a part of the weight, of the weight of the ship is on the water. Another part, another part of the weight of the weight of the ship is on the coral, the piece of coral. As the water level goes down, more, more and more of the weight, the weight of the ship is on the coral. And this is dangerous because the coral, if all, if 100% of the ship's weight, its weight is on the coral, the coral might split, split the ship in half, split the ship in half into two halves, two halves, break, break the ship in half. It's dangerous. So the crew throw, throw as much as they can, as many things as they can off the ship into the water. Here is a cannon, a cannon that fires cannon balls. This is a ball, a ball you put into the cannon, and then you light, light the fuse with fire. You light the fuse and it shoots, shoots, shoots the cannon ball. But cannons and cannon balls weigh, weigh a lot. They're very heavy. They're very heavy. So the crew threw, threw the cannons and the cannonballs off the ship into the water and other things. Lots of things were thrown off to reduce, to reduce the weight, the weight of the ship. By morning, morning the next day, the next day, 
let's say four or five o'clock in the morning, not 11 p.m. at night, four or five in the morning, the ship was still in one piece, one piece. It hadn't broken in half. And in the morning, the tide, the water level began to rise, began to go up, began to get higher. It was lucky. <sighs> lucky that the ship didn't break in half. As the water level rose and rose, there was more and more and more water under, under the ship, pushing, pushing up the ship. Less and less of the ship's weight was on the coral. And eventually at 10 p.m., 10 p.m., 10 p.m., the next night, the next night, they could free, free the ship from the coral. They could detach, detach the ship from the coral. They could free it. But now they had an even bigger problem. Now even more water was filling the ship. Because the coral was gone, more water could go through, go through the hole in the ship. When the endeavor struck, hit the coral, the ship was 25 miles, 25 miles from the coast. Don't, don't ask, don't ask me how many kilometers that is. I, I don't know. 25 miles from the coast and the ship is filling up with water. Will they make it? Will they make it to the coast before they sink, sink in the water? Did you like this video? If you want, you can help me to make more videos. You can support me on Patreon. The link is in the description below.